All right, guys, I'm going to show you how to do a contrast foot bath. And I want you to play around with this. Either try it with your feet or your arms or both. Usually what we do in class is we fill up a whole bunch of buckets and we, bowl, we do both our feet and our arms to get a sense of what a contrast bath feels like. Contrast treatments, like I said in the lecture, are the most effective treatment because you're combining the effects of heat and of cold. This is a really excellent treatment that you can do in, um, in a clinical setting. So you can add heat and then cold to one area. You can add heat and then cold to opposite areas. Or you can give this to your clients for home care. And this is something that I recommend for home care all the time. It's also something that I do all the time as a massage therapist. When you get out into the massage world uh, and you're using your arms a lot, a lot of massage therapists are prone to some kind of epicondylitis or repetitive strain injury with our hands, forearms, shoulders. It's just the nature of the work. We try to teach you to do massage well and with good biomechanics but there will be some wear and tear on, uh, on your muscles because you're using them. So a contrast bath is a really great way to keep your hands and arms in good shape. And I'm gonna show you what that looks like with a bath, a contrast foot bath. So what I'd like you to do is first uh, test the range of motion in your feet. So do, and your ankles. So do plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, Get a, a sense of the quality of movement. Do you have, have you sprained your ankles quite often? Do they crack? Do inversion and eversion. See if you can notice a difference between your feet. Ideally, we'd probably do both feet at the same time, but for experiment's sake, I want you to try doing just one foot. Contrast always starts in hot and then ends in cold. So I'm gonna do three minutes in the heat and then 30 to 60 seconds in cold and I'm gonna repeat that process three times, ending in cold. You always end in cold to create that vasoconstriction. So this creates what we talked about in the lecture, a vascular flush. Vasodilation, vasoconstriction, vascular flush. Really great for joints, uh, really great for tight muscles and repetitive strain areas. So I have run hot water into my bath and I put cold water into this tub here in my bathroom. I put ice cubes in the cold water because I'm hardcore like that and I like a more extreme version uh, between heat and cold. Obviously, if you wanna make this milder, then you make a, just, a, oh, there's the dogs. <laughs> a milder form of heat and cold. So I'm gonna take a deep breath in. And on the exhale, put my foot into the warm bath. Always in the warm because everything's vasodilating and moving around, you can do some range of motion in the hot water. Use the buoyancy effect of water to kind of float your foot in there, uh, improve your range of motion, and yeah. So I'm gonna leave it in for three minutes. So I'm gonna suggest you take your phones set up the timer somewhere close near, not, maybe not near the water, and time yourself three minutes. When three minutes is done, take a nice deep breath in. And on an exhale, you're gonna plunge into the cold water, and then keep a, a look at your clock. And we're gonna do 30 to 60 seconds, depending on how you handle cold. So after 20 seconds, if your foot feels numb, get it out of there. We're gonna use the cabin uh, method. So it's gonna go cold, aching, burning, numb. If you get to a place where your foot is numb, absolutely you should have taken it out a little bit sooner. So for some people that'll be 10 seconds. For some people you'll be able to do all 60 seconds. So I'm doing okay in here. My foot feels pretty good even though it's really cold water. So I'm gonna say that 60 seconds and then I'm gonna take a deep breath in and exhale back into the warm water and you'll really notice what a difference this feels like it almost feels it almost feels like burning like there's a really interesting feeling um, a little bit prickly as the the blood rushes to the area again after that vasoconstriction of the cold so again I'm going to do three minutes in the heat and then <sighs> exhale into the cold that's twice I'm gonna do that three times around, finish in the cold, do a minute more in the cold, and you'll notice every time you go into the cold, it gets easier and easier. 
and uh, there's less of an intense feeling with that cold. So think about your reflections, um, think about what's happening in your body as you do this. And then when you're done with the third cold, you're going to just drip dry off. Make sure you don't towel dry. Remember you want your body to air dry the area and retest your range of motion. Especially take a look at the quality of movement. So I can just tell, even though I didn't do that completely, I can tell the ease of my range of motion. My ankle feels way looser. Uh, it's easier to move. It's a really, really effective, strong treatment. And it's also great for strengthening your circulation and your constitution in that area. So it's a really great treatment.